revisited the medieval renaissance period. This week at the library, the Middlesex County Arts Council, in affiliation with the Middlesex County Cultural and Heritage Commission and the East Brunswick Arts Commission, presented Music for a While, performing music in three Renaissance lifestyles. The featured musicians were Leno Davenport, Judith Davidoff, Sheila Schoenbrunn, Patrick Mason, and Stephen Silverstein. The artists performed on replicas of medieval and Renaissance instruments, including recorders, crumb horns, shawms, viol de gamba, and others. The program was educational as well as entertaining. The musicians discussed the various types of instruments they used, their playing technique, their construction, and the various tonal qualities. I'm sure that many of you recognize that as a recorder. Uh, the recorder, of course, has become a very popular instrument in the last 50 years all over the world, and uh, this may look a little different from the recorder that you were used to seeing because this one is based, modeled after a Renaissance kind of recorder, and the ones that you buy in your local music store are roughly modeled after Baroque or 18th, 17th, and 18th century instruments. It's essentially the same instrument, just uh, some differences in interior design which, which make it sound a bit different. And then the dog was played, the hund, der hund, in der hund I played a krum horn.
Adrian Eisner, co-director of the East Brunswick Consumer Affairs Office. Welcome to Consumer Aware. We are issuing an alert to all consumers in our area who are considering the purchase of flu dampers to cut down on heating bills. There have been reports of companies operating in the state making exaggerated claims about how much money can be saved by installing flu dampers and then charging exorbitant prices for these devices. The State Department of Energy is working with the Division of Consumer Affairs to investigate claims made for flu dampers. The function of a flu damper is to close off the flu pipe, which carries waste gases from a furnace to the outside so that warm air from the house does not escape when the furnace is not working. Many factors, including the type and size of the furnace, the design and operation of the damper, and the age and location of the furnace, affect the amount of actual flu fuel savings from the purchase of the flu damper. Typically, flu dampers cost between $150 and $500 but we've been receiving reports that some of them are being sold for as high as $600. Anyone who does decide to add a flu damper to a heating unit should buy only an approved device and should have it installed by a professional. A damper installed on a gas furnace should have the American Gas Association seal of approval, and one installed on an oil unit should have the underwriter's laboratory seal. An improperly installed flu damper could lead to malfunction and to dangerous gases escaping into the living area of your home. If you have any questions about making your home energy efficient or are considering the purchase of energy savings devices, please call the Department of Energy Information Line at 800-492-4200. Four two. That's the New Jersey Department of Energy information line at 800-492-4242. If you have any other further questions, you can also contact our office at 254-4600. Thank you for joining me on Consumer Aware. Sergeant. Is Mr. Rote still at the 6th Precinct? Oh, he's probably left by now. Why? I have to tell him something. It's very important. May I have his phone number, please? His phone number? Yes. Now, don't tell me he didn't give it to you. Well, of course he did. I just don't happen to have it on me. You could get it from information. He lived in Scarsdale. I've tried. It's not listening. The East Brunswick Community Players present the mystery thriller, Wait Until Dark. Directed by Chick Moskowitz and featuring Jane Garcia, Erica Runyon, James Meadows, Don Gordon, Jerry Helmets, and Bob Herdman. The play opens at Playhouse 22 on Dunham's Corner Road, Friday, November 20th at 8.30 p.m. and runs every Friday and Saturday through December 12th. Tickets are available at the door or by calling 254-3939. That's Wait Until Dark at Playhouse 22. At this week's council meeting, Mayor Fox designated dates for special township observance during the month of November. Now, therefore, I waive that box, Mayor of the Township of East Brunswick, to hereby designate the month of November 1981 as National REACT Month in the Township of East Brunswick, during which all citizens shall take notice and be aware of the significant contribution every local REACT team makes to the welfare of the local community and the nation as a whole. Now, therefore, I waive that box, Mayor of the Township of East Brunswick, to hereby proclaim November 22, 1981 as Crop Sunday in the Township of East Brunswick. And I call upon all of our citizens to share in expressing our concern for hungry people 
by walking on November 22, 1981, or by sponsoring a walker. Be it further proclaimed that Civic Center Drive shall be renamed Prop Walk Drive for the two-week period from November 16 to December 6, 1981. The proposal for the repainting of the Tice's Lane water tank was approved by the council. Councilman Joe Hudak had a question about the bid. I noticed the uh, November 9th, 1981, the bid came in at almost half the price of anybody else. I'm wondering whether, I know they have a, a bond, but they came in at $31,200, where some bids came in at $111,067,054, and uh, the low bidder on this came in at $31,200. Would there, you know, is there any discrepancy or any... Uh... The question he asked is a very good one. Uh, the day before the bids, fellow that came to my office that could uh, barely speak English and requested a copy of the specifications and I spent time going over them and, and the ladies in my office really felt, felt sorry for the fellow because of the difficulty they had communicating, particularly with the vortex breaker and, and let them understand what that was. The next day when the bids came in, they said, was he the low bidder? And I said, yes, and it is. I saw that, you know, the range was uh, almost three times what his low bid was. And I felt, well, we've really got some company here. I mean, I just had this feeling. So we did check his references. I sent him a letter and asked him to submit five references where he's worked in the last year. And we talked to the engineers in town. said they work like beavers. So the best workers they've ever had. Uh, and they haven't come back in a minute. And uh, so that everything I have heard about them, as a matter of fact, they said, if you have an inspector on the job and he watches and suggests something else, they're so accommodating, they do anything you ask them. Even if it's not in the contract. I've got that memo in my file. So we have a qualified bidder who has done fine work for a number of municipalities, and, uh, and he does have a reliable bond, and uh, I think that uh, we've got uh, kind of a work product. So in this case, I, I did check the, the references of the second low bidder just in case, because uh, I sent a letter to them asking for uh, references also. And, uh, Actually, this person came out to be much better uh, recommended than the, the second low bidder. So I, uh, I would encourage you. Let's. This is a buyer's market. We <laughs> uh, should take it. Fine. Any other discussion? Questions? I right, would you call the roll? Mrs. Bluffin? Yes. Mr. Huda? Yes. Mr. O'Connor? Yes. Mrs. Weber? Yes. I declare the resolution adopted.